Although we have been living in the space age for more than half a century, flights to Earth's orbit are still rare. In the entire history of such flights, less than 600 people have visited space. Of course, there are thousands more people willing. The dream of looking at Earth from space literally blinded millions of people all around the world after the second Soviet cosmonaut German Titov hand-filmed the planet. This he did during a 25-hour space flight aboard the Vostok 2 spacecraft, and the footage became public. 60 years have passed since that significant flight in 1961. But when exactly will anyone be able to go into space and see the breathtaking panorama with their own eyes? The first tourist in space could have been the American teacher Krista McAuliffe, who had the opportunity to fly into orbit by Shuttle Challenger back in 1986. However, this launch was destined to become one of the most tragic events in the history of astronautics. On the 73rd second of the flight, the Challenger shuttle collapsed as a result of the explosion of an external fuel tank. Unfortunately, all crew members, including Krista McAuliffe, died. And this disaster put an end to the flights of non-professionals into space for many years. A second attempt to send a tourist into space was made 15 years later. On April 30, 2001, the first space tourist, Denis Tito, arrived at the International Space Station on the Russian Soyuz rocket. For Tito, this flight was the culmination of a dream he had cherished throughout his life. Tito spent $20 million on this idea. And along with the opportunity to see the Earth from orbit, he forever inscribed his name in history. I just adored looking out the window filming the Earth, the windows, the station. It was just wonderful. This is how the first space tourist described his experience. In one interview, he admitted, I was euphoric. It was the greatest experience of my life. There is no reason not to believe Dennis Tito. But so far, only a select few who have an extra $20 million to make their cherished dream come true could have experienced something like this. In 20 years since the first space tourist's flight, only seven super-rich people have visited the ISS. But the situation may change radically in the near future. In 2004, Sir Richard Branson founded the Virgin Galactic Company, which remains at the forefront of space tourism to this day. Plans are in place to launch commercial space travel, if not this year, then the next one. Richard Branson himself believes that the space market has room for 20 companies sending tourists. In addition to Virgin Galactic, Elon Musk's SpaceX and Blue Origin, founded by Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, are currently participating in this race. In general, experts estimate the value of the space tourism market at $34 billion. And according to Branson, quote, the space world is just beginning. Virgin Galactic's success confirms this. For 17 years, the company's engineers have developed the suborbital travel program and the Spaceship 2 reusable space system. It includes three main components, the White Knight 2 carrier aircraft, the Spaceship 2 spacecraft, and the Rocket Motor 2 hybrid rocket engine. The peculiarity of Virgin Galactic launches is that flights are performed using the air launch technology, to do this, the White Knight 2 carrier aircraft raises the Spaceship 2 spacecraft by 15 to 16 kilometers. At this altitude, the spacecraft undocks and continues its independent flight after launching the rocket engines, which bring the spacecraft to a ballistic trajectory at an altitude of up to 100 kilometers. The Spaceship 2 is 18.2 meters long and weighs just under 10 tons. The ship's cockpit is designed for two pilots and can accommodate up to six passengers. The device is equipped with its own hybrid rocket engine, which uses solid polybutadiene HTPB as fuel and gaseous nitric oxide as an oxidizer. For breaking in dense layers of the atmosphere, the tail booms of the ship are folded and take the form of a shuttlecock. Once in the troposphere, the booms unfold back and the space plane under the control of the pilots makes a soft landing on the runway according to the principle of a conventional glider. It's interesting to know that Virgin Galactic had planned to launch flights back in 2009 since the inception of Spaceship 2. But a series of serious setbacks, including the crash of the VSS Enterprise in 2014, which claimed the life of test pilot Michael Alsbury, extended the test phase of the ship. Then the air-braking system was applied too early, which led to the destruction of the spacecraft mid-air. 
Co-pilot Peter Siebold managed to eject and survive. After this crash, the company developed a new VSS Unity spacecraft, for which testing began at the end of 2016 and continued until recently. It was on this ship that the last successful launch of a spacecraft was performed with the founder of Virgin Galactic on board. On July 11th of this year, 70-year-old Richard Branson, along with two pilots and three passengers, employees of the company, triumphantly flew into space on their VSS Unity spacecraft, rising to an altitude of more than 86 kilometers. This flight was the 22nd test launch of the VSS Unity. By the end of this year, early beginning of the next one, the company plans to start commercial flights. A queue has already lined up for tours into space. 600 seats have already been sold for the first flights. Recently, it became known that Elon Musk desires to go on a space flight on the ship of his close friend, Richard Branson. Another leader of the race, Blue Origin, is not lagging behind on plans to create a new space industry. Jeff Bezos' company embarked on the aerospace journey around the same time as Virgin Galactic, presented a platform module for vertical takeoff and landing on a jet engine. A year later, the Goddard spacecraft designed for suborbital transportation was tested, and only a few years later, the suborbital ship New Shepard was developed from these two projects to deliver passengers and cargo into space. In total, the company has created three such spaceships. The first one partially collapsed during a test flight in 2015, while the other two made several successful launches and even delivered scientific cargo to a lower orbit. The New Shepard is a single-stage rocket with a height of 18 meters and a launch weight of about 40 tons. In the upper part, there is a capsule for six passengers. The rocket is launched from a vertical position using an oxygen-hydrogen rocket engine. After reaching the Kármán line, the official boundary of space, at an altitude of 100 kilometers, the first stage undocks and goes back to Earth, where it makes a soft landing on a rocket engine. The capsule with passengers then comes back later, its landing is carried out by parachutes with engines. In addition, the capsule is equipped with a rescue system that allows you to go to a safe distance from an emergency missile at any height. The main difference between the new Shepard rocket and the Virginian VSS Unity spacecraft is that the first one is launched into space in an unmanned mode and controlled from the Earth, while the Virgin Galactic spacecraft requires manned control. On another note, the Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos, if everything goes as planned, will go on his first flight into space on a new Shepard rocket on July 20th, the anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. The recent successes of both the Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, as well as the space race of their founders, give great hope that space tourism is just around the corner. Competition has been an engine for development at all times, and this case is unlikely to be an exception. The only issue remains about the cost of such travel. Both companies plan to charge from $200 and up to $300,000 for a few minutes of spaceflight and staying in zero gravity. But competition is already bearing its first fruits. Immediately after his festive flight, Sir Richard Branson announced a giveaway for two tickets for a commercial flight into space. Well, we are waiting for an answer from Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, who carefully led us into a new cosmic future. Would you like to see the Earth from space? Which travel option do you like best, in a spaceship or a rocket? Please share your thoughts in the comments.